Today, we're going to look at why the Madam Web movie failed at the box office. You don't have to know anything about anything <laughs> at all to watch this movie. Can you name the three Spider-Man uh, Tom Holland movies? No. Madam Web is a 2024 American superhero film based on Marvel Comics featuring the character of the same name, produced by Columbia Pictures and D. Bonaventura Pictures in association with Marvel Entertainment and TSG Entertainment, and distributed by Sony Pictures releasing. It is the fourth film in Sony's Spider-Man universe. The film was directed by S. J. Clarkson in her directorial debut from a screenplay she co-wrote with Claire Parker and the writing team of Matt Sassima and Burke Sharpless. It stars Dakota Johnson in the title role, alongside Sidney Sweeney, Celeste O'Connor, Isabella Merced, Tahar Rahim, Mike Epps, Emma Roberts, and Adam Scott. Before we continue, spoilers ahead. The plot begins in 1973 in the jungles of Peru. A research team led by Ezekiel Sims and his pregnant partner Constance Webb discovers an unidentified species of spider with rare healing properties. Ezekiel betrays the team and claims the spider for himself before leaving Constance for dead. An indigenous tribe attempts to save Constance, but she dies shortly after giving birth to Cassandra. In 2003, Cassandra, going by Cassie, works as a paramedic in New York alongside her co-workers Benjamin Ben Parker and O'Neill. During a dangerous call, Cassie falls into the water and has a near-death experience. Ben revives her but she begins to experience visions. Initially, she dismisses them as deja vu, but after failing to prevent O'Neill's death, Cassie realizes that she can see into the future. Ezekiel, who has limited precognition power and enhanced physical abilities, collects information on three young women, Julia Cornwall, Anya Corazon, and Maddie Franklin. His visions lead him to believe that they are destined to kill him. Cassie is also drawn to the same women and intervenes to stop Ezekiel from ambushing them at Grand Central Station. She steals a taxi and takes Julia, Anya, and Maddie out of the city to hide them in a nearby forest. Cassie returns to her apartment and finds Constance's notes which reveal Ezekiel's identity and the true nature of his powers. Ignoring Cassie's instructions, the girls go to a diner where Ezekiel finds them. After briefly incapacitating Ezekiel by ramming him with the car, Cassie takes the girls back to Queens and they take refuge in Ben's house. The film isn't badly made and the action scenes are competent also the pacing is fairly good. It could have been a tighter, better fit, but all in all it's competently made. So, why the poor reviews and box office? First off, there's a lack of a prominent male character with a backbone. 65 to 70% of the audience for superhero films is a male demographic. There has to be something to draw that demographic into theaters. You can have strong female characters, such as Sigourney Weaver in the Alien films and Linda Hamilton in the Terminator films. But if all your male characters are too mild-mannered, even mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent turned into Superman, you have nothing to draw that male demographic into the film. The best we get here is Ben Parker, whose sole purpose is to drive his pregnant sister to the hospital to give birth to, we assume, Peter Parker. But he's completely helpless against the film's antagonist Ezekiel. Ezekiel's henchwoman sees the three females that he's looking for riding to the hospital with Ben and his sister. Why did the three girls have to go with them to the hospital instead of staying in the house where they wouldn't be detected? As one reviewer said, so the rest of the film can happen. A lot of plot holes abound, such as, how did Cassie get away with driving a stolen cab so long without being pulled over? Surely the cab company reported it as stolen? But that's beside the point, I guess. Let's compare this to the Charlie's Angels movies from some years ago, since there are three female heroes with a leader to guide them in the action. Why does it always have to be on the phone? Why can't we ever see Charlie? I believe that was very clearly spelled out when you were hired. Nobody sees Charlie except me. 
Charlie's Angels began as a 1970s TV series with three hot babes fighting crime. It had a successful five-year run and made superstars out of the three female leads. Charlie was never seen on screen, but John Forsythe voiced the character. David Doyle's character of Bosley was the liaison between them and Charlie and guided them on their missions. The TV series was revived as a movie series in 2000 with the opening scene even making fun of all the movies based on old TV shows. <sighs> Another movie from an old TV show. John Forsythe is back as Charlie with all new angels, but this time with Bill Murray as Bosley. The film was successful enough to spawn a 2003 sequel. Then we come to a soft reboot of the franchise in 2019 with Elizabeth Banks at the helm. The only recognizable angel in this was Kristen Stewart as Sabrina. Did you know? What? That it takes men an additional seven seconds to perceive a woman as a threat compared to a man. But this time the film failed. So what happened? The two Charlie's Angels with Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu and Drew Barrymore both made over 250 million box office dollars. But the Elizabeth Banks vehicle made around 70 million not even breaking even with its production budget. All the Charlie's Angels films showed strong female characters. Even the 70s TV series showed the protagonists taking down male characters. So, why did these shows and the 2000 films succeed with a male audience while the 2019 version flopped? It's simple, really. There were strong males in all incarnations of Charlie's Angels, except maybe that 2011 TV series which was also a flop. Last time I cracked one of these, it was under two minutes, but that was after two Cosmos and I was hanging upside down. That's my girl. But this time the film failed. So what happened? The two Charlie's Angels with Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu and Drew Barrymore both made over 250 million box office dollars. <laughs> Call Chinese fighting method. But the Elizabeth Banks vehicle made around 70 million, not even breaking even with its production budget. All the Charlie's Angels films showed strong female characters. Even the 70s TV series showed the protagonists taking down male characters. So, why did these shows and the 2000 films succeed with a male audience while the 2019 version flopped? It's simple, really. There were strong males in all incarnations of Charlie's Angels, but the white males in the 2019 version were all weak or villains. Hell, even Bosley is a villain in this incarnation of the show. This turns off a male audience. It's woke political agenda of showing old white dudes, as Brie Larson would call them, either weak or villainous. It's the same problem with most recent superhero movies. The films they create leave a bitter taste in our mouths. They subvert the male leads, such as Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which should have been called WandaVision and the Multiverse of Madness, to the point where these characters are undermined in their own movies. Yes, that movie made money, but I feel the reason it made money can be summed up in two words, Sam Raimi. His directing skills and the breathtaking visuals made this film watchable, even if the script itself wasn't. And now we come to another female superhero movie where all the strong characters are women except one, the old white dude, who is the main villain. Race swapping, gender swapping, and undermining male characters. Oh Hollywoke, when will you learn? Your movies keep failing and you keep blaming us fans, calling us racist, sexist, and homophobes when we're nothing of the sort. We simply want our heroes to be recognizable versions of the characters we all know and love, like in the first three phases of the MCU, until by the end of phase four where it became the MCU. That was our show for today. What do you think? Did Kevin Feige lose his way? Have they started to make our comic book characters unrecognizable? Do they need to get back on track? Let me know in the comments section below. And, while you're at it, I'd be honored if you subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell to stay informed and check out my Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter franchise also in the comments section. Until next time, this is Axel and for Kevin Given saying live long and prosper. May the force be with you and keep reaching for the stars.